this week we are going to be uh, studying the viruses and I think this is the right time to study viruses as we um, face the uh, pandemic nature of the coronavirus and as the whole world is uh, under lockdown and we are actually baffled with what is going on with uh, coronavirus and I hope that at the end of this week you appreciate uh, viruses much better and also uh, be more knowledgeable as we think about what is going on in our world and viruses continue to surprise scientists um, the study then we are uh, you know baffled when it comes to uh, the complexity in the above sentences when it comes to the mutation rate when it comes to the inability to have uh, drugs or fasting to cure uh, viral diseases and also you know people think uh, these organisms are just particles are they alive and also what roles did viruses play in the evolution of life so there are so many questions that are yet unanswered and I want you to think about what some things you have learned about viruses that have surprised you especially during this uh, pandemic uh, period and maybe there are some things that you might get to understand much better as we go through the study of viruses and I have a virus assignment that you have to complete uh, this week so when you click uh, on the link uh, on this slide I also posted it on a Moodle it will take you to uh, the virus explorer uh, on the HHMI website and this is very interactive you can click on several uh, aspects of the website and it give you uh, some of the information about viruses that you will need to complete the virus or worksheet so if you click on the envelope it will show you which of these categories of viruses are naked virus and enveloped virus if you click on the structure it will give you the names of the structure uh, and how they are classified uh, also the host will give you uh, the type of host the viruses are uh, invades the genomic type will tell you if the uh, uh, DNA or RNA uh, viruses and so that's uh, what you need to answer the uh, viral work the worksheet uh, transmission we tell you uh, the mode of transmission is it human to human or animal to animal or bacterium to bacterium first thing we tell you if we are first thing ready for any of these uh, viruses or not so it's very educative very interactive so just go ahead and play around with that and use that to complete the viral worksheet so the viral worksheet will be due by Friday at uh, 11 p.m. Eastern Time so um, you should be able to um, do that uh, easily I have the problem set form already uploaded so you can start working your way through the problem set form this will be the final problem set and that will be due next week uh, May 7th so you can start working on that uh, the quiz is on Friday so that will be quiz 4 and that will be our last quiz um, so you can take it anytime on Friday uh, for the uh, finance so I already sent you uh, information about the final cumulative exam it's going to be a combination of MCQ uh, 40 points that you will take online and then we have the open book uh, this is the written part that's 80 points that you have two days to complete 
and because this is cumulative um i will bring uh some of the topics we learned earlier in the in the semester of course i'm not going to ask you to read all the uh, topics uh so i've selected three topics uh principles of disease and epidemiology chapter 14 antimicrobial drugs and resistance and microbial growth so you have to study these three topics along with the topics after exam three and so that will include the viruses and it's currently clear and 39 the viruses and the uh microbial ecology that we're going to study uh, next week and also it will include uh, the diseases that we are uh, already uh, look at so those are the topics that you want to uh, prepare for Uh, so let's look at the learning outcome uh, as we uh, look at viruses. So we're going to look at general morphology and taxonomy of viruses. How are the viruses classified? And do we describe uh, multiplication of uh, viruses looking at life cycles of bacteriophages and animal viruses? So in this video, we will go through the life cycle of battery veggies. And uh, on the next video, uh, I will walk you through the animal viruses and I will uh, talk a little bit about the coronavirus. And we will look at techniques we can use to culture and identify animal viruses and the importance of viruses in human health. And also we just, um, mention a little bit about uh, investors protein called prions um so this is basic introduction to virology so uh there's no way we can cover uh the broad topic of viruses in just one week on lecture so I'll be introducing to virology and later on if you take advanced classes you might go in depth to look at viruses but let's start by asking the question what are viruses what do you think are viruses maybe based on your knowledge uh, from, from, uh, from high school from college from the from the media Uh, if you like, you can make some jottings. Just think about what you think are viruses. Uh, so let me start by giving you some basic characteristic of viruses, and you can check. Uh, maybe you make some jottings down, and you want to see if you get them right. So viruses are obligatory intracellular parasites. So what does that mean? It means that they require living host cells to multiply. They can survive outside a living thing. So they hijack the machinery of the old cell and they use that to synthesize viral protein. And then they can continue in their generation. So they require a living host to multiply. So the the nucleic acid is either DNA or RNA. So viruses don't contain both DNA or RNA. So you're either DNA viruses or DNA or RNA or viruses. And they have a protein coat that surrounds these nucleic acid. So it is from a protection just to pack the RNA or DNA so that they don't become degraded. They don't have ribosomes. Well, ribosomes are bigger than viruses. So they 
don't need Ryerson since they can hijack the machinery of OS uh, and just use the Ryerson's. And they don't have uh, any ATP generation generating mechanism because you can make use of the host uh, ATP, the host machinery, the host nutrient to do whatever they want to do. So if we put all these characteristics together, they do not independently fulfill the characteristic of life. So that's why some biologists see viruses as non-living things because they are dead without a host. That the medical personnel, the doctors or nurses that are right now in the front line of fighting the coronavirus will tell you that they are real, that these are living things. So it depends on the school of thought where you're coming from. So overall, the non-living things outside the host, but they become living things inside the host and they can wreak great effort. Another thing about the viruses is that uh, they infect specific type of cells in one host. There might be viruses that target the liver or target um, the heart, the lungs. And of course we have some that might target more than or specific type of organs in the body. Also, we have some viruses that are specific to particular host. We have viruses that target just the bacteria. We have plant viruses. We have animal viruses. So they are very specific in the uh, attachment. And this attachment is determined by specific host attachment site and cellular factors. Um, so they can get attached to the glycoprotein on the cell membrane of the host cell. So they are specific. So the glycoprotein have to correspond to the uh, receptor or to the attachment factor on the viruses just like uh, bacteria uh, just like an enzyme's reaction enzyme is very specific in its reaction to enzyme and substrate specificity so we have different type uh, of viruses so the bacterial veggies we invade a uh, bacteria so here we have a, a veg or bacterial veg that is you know attached to E. coli. So this is E. coli. So this is specific to E. coli. So any other type of virus will not be able to get old on the E. coli. We have plant viruses like uh, the tobacco mosaic uh, viruses. We have animal viruses like coronavirus and several other ones. So under the animal we have different types we have uh we can talk about the cattle, the pigs, the avian, the uh protozoa. So we have different type of animal uh, viruses. Now in rare cases uh virus cross the host barrier host species barrier host species barrier so they normally stay with the host so like uh, a plant viruses we only infect viruses not jump from plant to animal but in, in some instances like uh like the uh influenza a viruses uh the have the ability to cross from uh, say balls to peaks 
to horses, to seals, to animals. So they jump around and that make the issue of influenza A to be of medical importance because of, of you know, the virus that is seen in one species crossing over to another species and causing illness. Okay. So we call that uh, crossing the old species barrier. It's not very common, but we, we have seen something like that from the avian virus crossing to the swine virus uh, gene pool and then infecting humans. So I want you to go um, on the forum and discuss what is the medical importance of the narrow host range of viruses. Why is that of medical importance if the uh, virus host range is very narrow? How is it important? How is it useful uh, to medicine? So go on the forum and, and discuss that. Uh, before we go further, let's just look at size range. How small, you know, are viruses? Now, if you look at this picture right here, so we have a red blood cell uh, with about 10,000 nanometer in diameter. And just beside the red blood cell, you can see um, E. coli right there. So just look at the size of an E. coli. So probably about 3,000 nanometer in length compared to 10,000 nanometer uh, diameter of red blood cell. And you know, for you to be able to see red blood cell, you have to go under the light microscope. Now let's zoom on the E. coli and then you can now compare a viruses to E. coli. So here we have uh, the smallpox virus which is about 200 nanometer by 300 nanometer that's very small compared to an E. coli cell and then you can see a battery ridge just right there about 15 nanometer by 225 nanometer so the viruses are really small we can see them under the light microscope we have to use the electron microscope uh, to see the virus. So until the uh, manufacturing of electron microscope, we have so limited knowledge about viruses. So power viruses are the smallest uh, viruses that we know and they are about 20 nanometer in diameter. Now the coronavirus is a little bit bigger, so 60 to 140 nanometer. And actually, coronavirus is the biggest uh, of the RNA uh, viruses. And uh, so the largest viruses include this mega virus, the mimi viruses that get up to 450 nanometer. And actually the Pando virus is 1000 nanometer in length. Now, this picture give you uh, these various sizes of different uh, viruses. And you can see the Ebola virus is really huge compared to our other viruses. And if you look at uh, the Zika virus, just like a tiny fraction of the Ebola uh, viruses. Okay. And so here is the uh, HIV virus, which is small of conical in shape, um, it's kind of medium size uh, in length. We have the adeni, adenoviruses, uh, the cause of the common cold. So these are the spherozyces of uh, viruses. Uh, well, let's look at viral components. So what are they um, actually uh, made up of? And so the viral component are what they need to invade and control the old cell. So they are particle, so the virus particle um, made up of the central core. So the central core is basically 
uh, the nucleic acid to either the DNA or the RNA. Like I told you earlier, viruses don't contain both DNA or RNA. And then uh, in some viruses, um, they have what is called the matrix protein. So the matrix protein are enzymes that they can use along with the synthesis of the viral protein after they hijack the machinery of the old. So some of these viruses bring along their own enzymes. Are we going to be talking about that so that they can use that to uh, to do some of the synthesis required or to stop the uh, host uh, machinery from manufacturing the host uh, protein. And apart from this central core, we have a covering that protects and covers the uh, nucleic acid molecule. So we call that the capsid. So the capsid is a protein coverage that actually uh, form like a cell membrane around them and it's made up of a subunit called the capsomere so in this picture you can see the capsomere and together we call that capsid and that protect the nucleic acid inside uh, the capsid um, protective um, layer so the nucleic acid together with the capsid is called the nuclear capsid so this whole diagram is nuclear capsid now um some viruses have additional coverage called the envelope so we, have, we call them enveloped viruses so coronavirus is an enveloped um virus but not all viruses have the envelope so we call them um, naked viruses so naked viruses don't have envelope but they have the nuclear capsid like in this picture you can see the nuclear capsid you can see that containing the nucleic acid and also you can see the spikes and uh, on the outside of the capsid now here we have envelope that cover the nuclear capsid and then you can see uh, the other inclusion and then you can see the spike so they use the spike to get a foot hole on the host cell so they use the spike to get attached so this despite uh, carbon hydrate protein complexes or glycoprotein that protect the surface of the uh, that, that are projecting from the surface of the uh, envelope and you know, some viruses attached to the host by that spike and we can also use the spike like on like a characteristic to identify some of the viruses like the influenza virus uh they use the spike to form what is called uh, blood clotting or hemagglutination it's a uh, hemagglutination so clotting of blood eg uh so that would be in the influenza a virus so uh we can use that in identification of the this particular virus and um in terms of general morphology uh we have three major uh, different types that actually right now you know, there are also some other types that have been added to the uh, to the initial media type. So we have those that look helical, uh, they are cylindrical and hollow in shape, like this Ebola and that you can see right here. So this is a perfect example of helical uh, viruses uh, 
in terms of morphology. And here you can see the nucleic seed, hollow and cylindrical, and you see the cap seed covering that. So that is a type of helical um, viruses. We also have the Acrosahendra or polyhendra. So the polyhendra viruses, they have, um, they are many sided. So that means they have so many sides. So, and you can see 20 triangular faces and 12 corners of these uh, Icosahendra uh, viruses. So this uh, adenovirus is an example of Icosahendra viruses with uh, 20 triangular um, faces. And we also have some bacteria that are conical in shape or uh, like our HIV is an example. Uh, we have some that are spherical, you know, kind of, you know, just a little bit uh, different from conical. We have some that are complex. So complex bacteria, especially the bacteriophages, have unique structure. There is no conical, spherical, or helical. They can have a combination of these helical together with the icosahedra, as we're going to see on the on the next slide. So, so here is a complex virus. So they have a complicated structure. Here you can see the uh, polyhedra shape, and also here you can see uh, like a helix shape together. In, in fact, they look like aliens coming from space. So, so these are complex viruses, uh, and they are better veggies. So we're going to uh, spend some time looking at the multiplication of better veggies. And some of these viruses are enveloped, so they have a lipid protein and carbohydrate coating on them that give them an additional uh, protection. So this is an example of uh, envelope uh, virus. And then you could see the spikes projecting out of the envelope. And those that do, that do not have an envelope also can have spike on the cap seed. So the spike uh, is a projection from the outer surface, like I said earlier, because in my agglutination that, that can be used in identification of some of these uh, viruses. And uh, uh, let's look at the taxonomy of viruses. So we can use the nucleic acid to identify or to group viruses um, based on what type of nucleic acid they have. So we have uh, DNA viruses and RNA viruses. So DNA viruses can be single-stranded or they could be double-stranded. And the nucleic acid could be linear or circular, depending on the type of uh, virus we are talking about. Now, single-stranded um, DNA, or let's start with double-stranded. So double-stranded, so one example is the very uh, virus that called the small pulse. Now, in the uh, DNA viruses, they simply follow the central uh, biology dogma. So you have from DNA uh, to messenger RNA into protein. Okay, so the viruses can use their DNA uh, to form viral messenger RNA after hijacking uh, the host machinery and then they can produce a viral protein. So it's kind of uh, straightforward, okay? 
and, and then they can begin to express the viral gene and like variola virus still, then you begin to have uh, smallpox epic simplex 2 causes juniper ips so that is also a double uh, stranded uh, dna we also have adenoviridin adenoviruses are also uh, double stranded dna and they could be enveloped and they might not be enveloped the single stranded DNA also follow the same pattern of uh, DNA to RNA to protein. A good example is the Pavo virus. And we also have uh, some other uh, viruses in that uh, category. Okay. So Pavo virus cause what is called the fifth disease and also from Erythema infectious. So these are DNA viruses. And on the next video, I'll be talking more about uh, the biosynthesis that occur when we look at the stages in the multiplication. But here, I'm just giving you an overview of these uh, viruses. Now, the RNA viruses. Um, could be double stranded RNA or they could be single stranded RNA. Uh, but most of the time, they often like to be single uh, stranded um, RNA. So we have a uh, double stranded RNA. So let's start with the single stranded um, RNA. Now, when it comes to RNA, they can be positive or negative sense so positive sense rna so we call that plus rna so the plus rna so these are ready for immediate translation so they're ready to hijack the host machinery and begin to produce viral protein so one example is the polio virus. So polio virus is single stranded uh, positive sense. Also on uh, coronavirus is single stranded positive uh, sense RNA. So it gets into the body and it's ready to go. It's ready to hijack and begin to uh, translate a uh, viral protein. And in terms of the negative sense single stranded RNA, so these are viruses that must first be converted to a positive sense RNA before they can begin translation. And so they have an enzyme called the RNA dependent RNA transcriptase that help them uh, in converting to. Uh, positive sense RNA. So the influenza virus that called the influenza is a negative sense single stranded uh, RNA that have to first convert its negative sense RNA to a positive sense RNA and then they can uh, go ahead and begin to translate to a viral uh, protein. Uh, we also have double stranded RNA, like in the rotavirus, that uh, have to use the double strand RNA uh, in the meta in the uh, syn in biosynthesis. And we have the retroviruses. So retroviruses as single stranded RNA reversed transcriptase. So what this means that they carry their own enzymes to create DNA out of RNA. So this is uh, the exception to the central biology dogma uh, because we know that DNA to RNA to protein, but what they do is they start with RNA to DNA and then back to or you know RNA then they can produce the protein. 
So on the next slide, we will spend more time looking at the above synthesis uh, of these of these viruses. This is just an overview so that you have an idea of these various types of viruses that we have. Okay. Now let's look more into the bacteriophages and see how bacteriophages are um, multiplied. So bacteriophages just mean bacteria eating. So these are viruses that uh, attack uh, this bacteria. So for different bacteria, we have different uh, viruses. So bacteriophages like T4, T7, we have specific uh, bacteria that they will infect. So most of the bacteriophages are double-stranded DNA. And of course, in some, we can have a RNA um, viruses too. So every bacteria SPC is parasitized by various specific bacteria. So E. coli, we have its own uh, VEG, and uh, coordinate bacteria, we have its own VEG, uh, Staphylococcus or we have its own feed. So they are specific to what bacteria they infect. And most of the time, they make the bacteria to become more pathogenic. And we're gonna be talking about that. For example, E. coli are, you know, the normal microbial biota, but when they are being infected by a VEG, for example, they can pick up a um, toxin. Uh, we talk about the sugar toxin, and then those bacteria become more pathogenic uh, in human. So let's look at the uh, structure of bacteriophages. So we have the acrosahendra capsid that contains the DNA particle. So that is the head of the veg. And then we have the central sheath right here called the sheets, you know, and that is where um, the um, the nucleic acid we pass through when it's been injected into the bacterium and here you can see uh the the fibers and the and the tapings so that is used to get attached to the bacterium okay and here you can see the tube that allow or that eject the nucleic acid uh, into the uh, bacterium here is the bacteria uh, cell wall. We're going to be looking in detail when we describe these uh, stages. Now, there are two types of circuits uh, during multiplication of bacteriophages. We have the lytic circuit that causes death of the host cell. So, this is a more virulent stage. So virulent stage. So it eventually lead to the lysis and death of the old cell. We have the lysogenic, uh, which does not lead to the death of the old cell in temperate, in temperate veggies. So they carry a lysogenic cycle. And in this particular uh, cycle, the veg DNA is incorporated into the host DNA and then you have um, a provage. So you have a combination. So let me try to get that pencil out. Okay. Okay. So let me just. So we call these the the viral DNA and then the other one is the bacteria DNA and this is a prophage so the whole uh, DNA combination is the prophage and so this leads to what is called veg conversion so the bacteria DNA begin to express 
because now you recombine and express the new uh, gene uh, of that particular uh, ridge. And that can lead to special transduction. We talk about that whereby uh, during um, viral assemblage, a different gene can be picked up that can you know, introduce a toxin to the bacteria. Now let's look at the lytic cycle. We have five stages. The first is attachment. So the veg needs to get attached to the host cell, to the bacterium. Okay. And this is specific. The receptor on the host cell must be able to recognize the spike or the, um, or the projection uh, on the virus. So, and then now is what we allow the connection or the attachment adhesion between the virus and the in the uh, bacteria so in this picture you can see the uh, the tail is used in the attachment to the cell wall uh, of the bacteria and after that is penetration so the veg needs to penetrate the host through the cell wall the plasma membrane and inject the dna so this is the viral DNA being injected into the bacteria. And what you see is that you see the, the contraction of the sheet like a springboard that allow the tail core to get through the plasma membrane and then inject the, uh, the viral DNA. After the penetration, the next is the bound synthesis now the bacteriophages DNA with the ready synthesis of the viral components by using the host uh, machinery. And so in this picture, you could see the biosynthesis of several components. You can see the the tail. You can see the uh, the capsid. So all of these will be um, synthesized separately. And then the next stage is maturation, where the viral component are assembled together so we call that assembly and maturation so these various particles or components of the viral uh, component we come together and fix like uh, when you fix a like a puzzle a jigsaw puzzle you fix them together and after they are being assembled the next is the release of the uh, virion and that we involve the lysosomes to break apart the uh, cell wall and cell membrane and then you can see the viruses can be released and begin to infect other nearby uh, cells and that will lead to the lysis of the bacteria. So that is the lytic cycle, it's more virulent, it leads to the death of the bacteria. Let's take a look at this um, video clip. Virulent phages carry out a simple life cycle called the lytic cycle. The phage attaches to the host cell during the attachment stage and then penetrates the host cell and injects its DNA during the penetration stage. After penetration, the phage causes the host DNA to break into small pieces. The phage then uses the host machinery to synthesize new copies of its DNA. This process is part of the biosynthesis stage. Biosynthesis also involves production of viral proteins. Once biosynthesis is complete, the phage components are assembled into virions during the maturation or assembly stage. In the release stage of the lytic cycle, the cell lyses, releasing the phage virions. These released phages go on to infect other cells.
Now, in this video, uh, we're going to look at another type of battery phages. We call them temperate battery phages that go through the lysogenic cycle. And of course, sometimes they can also revert to lytic cycle. Temperate bacteriophages carry out two types of life cycle, the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle. The lytic cycle for temperate bacteriophages is similar to the lytic cycle for virulent phages. The phage attaches to the host cell during the attachment stage and then penetrates the host cell and injects its DNA during the penetration stage. In temperate bacteriophages, the phage DNA forms a circle, which can either replicate and be transcribed to produce phage components in the lytic cycle, or can proceed to the lysogenic cycle. During the biosynthesis stage of the lytic cycle, the phage DNA directs the host cell to synthesize viral components. The phage components are assembled into virions during the maturation or assembly stage. In the release stage of the lytic cycle, the cell lyses, releasing the phage virions. These released phages can go on to infect other cells. Recall that temperate phages can proceed either to the lytic cycle or the lysogenic cycle shortly after penetration. In the lysogenic cycle, the phage DNA integrates within the bacterial chromosome by recombination. The inserted phage DNA is called a prophage. Most of the phage proteins are repressed by two repressor proteins that are products of the phage genes. Whenever the bacterium reproduces, the prophage is also copied. The prophage is excised from the host chromosome in a process called induction. Induction can occur spontaneously through recombination or some other genetic event, or through the action of UV light or certain chemicals. At this point, the phage may enter the lytic cycle. Uh, so in summary, uh, during lysogeny, uh, the phage remains latent. So it becomes part of the, D of the bacteria DNA because it's incorporated into the uh, bacterium DNA. And so at that point, we call it a privilege. And so when the privilege replicates, it also replicates and propagates um, the viral uh, DNA. So, and that means it can begin to express uh, the characteristic of that particular uh, virus. So I uh, will call that the VEG conversion. The O's exhibit the new property brought about by the uh, incorporation of the um, phage uh, DNA. So I want you to take your time to study uh, the, the lytic circuit and the lysogenic circuit and be able to explain what is going on and be able to differentiate and compare between the lytic cycle and the lysogenic uh, cycle. Now, uh, we can think in terms of uh, battery phages in human disease. Are they uh, friends or foes? Now, let's look at two examples, and then, no, I will leave that to you to think about the battery phages in human disease. So in India, um, a couple of years ago, between 1928 and 1934, uh, there was this uh, outbreak of uh, cholera in India that killed a lot of, a lot of people, and so the death toll was like 30 uh, people per 10,000. So it's kind of very high um, uh, epidemic at that time. But then they begin to use the lytic battery phages that can destroy the pathogen, in this case, the vibro cholera. So they use the, vib they use the lytic battery phages uh, to kill all the uh, vibro cholera that were causing the uh, cholera. And then the death toll from cholera fell from 30 
people with uh, 10,000 population to just two. So that was a huge miracle, it was a breakthrough uh, using the uh, better veggies to combat disease. But then we know that, uh, like we talk about, you know, a non pathogenic bacteria become more pathogenic due to uh, lysogeny. So the danger of lysogeny in a human disease is that's when a viral DNA becomes incorporated into the uh, bacterial uh, uh, DNA. So NSM2 is in the coronary bacterial diphtheria that causes diphtheria toxin. So it is because of the lysogeny in the coronary bacteria that they pick up the diphtheria toxin and they become more uh, virulent. Uh, liberal cholera pick up cholera toxin uh, from uh, better veggies and become more virulent. Clostridium botulinum is also because of the botulinum toxin pick up from veggies. We have, we have several other examples like E. coli that can pick up uh, cigar toxin and become more violent. So like E. coli is a normal uh, microbiota on, in humans but become more uh, pa uh, pathogenic when they pick up a uh, toxin uh, during uh, lysogeny. So sometimes they could be friends and sometimes they could be foes. So we I have to um, you know, kind of walk a very thin line between using better phages um, in some instances. And so we're going to stop here. Um, and then on the next video, we will go more into biosynthesis. And also we will look at uh, animal virus uh, multiplication. So let's uh, go through uh, some concept check. Uh, so, which of the following is not a morphological type of virus? And we have helical, uh, polymorphic, polyhedra, and envelope. So, we know that helical is cylindrical shape of some of the capsid. So, polymorphic would be the wrong answer. It's not part of the morphological type of viruses. Uh, polyhedra is a capsid uh, morphology. Some env some viruses are enveloped, some are not enveloped. Number two, which of the following statement about virus spikes is false? Um, so let's look through these options. Number A, they are composed of carbohydrate protein complexes. So that's the glycoprotein so that will be correct they're used for attachment that would be correct they may cause imaglutination uh, that would be correct they bind to reception on the old cell wall that would be correct they are found only on non-enveloped viruses that would be wrong uh, we know that coronavirus is enveloped and it has spikes uh, number three, capsid are composed of protein subunit known as uh, yeah, so that would be capsomere, that would be A. Now, number four, which of the following list stages of a lytic replication cycle in order from earliest to later stages? So, one way you can do that is you can uh, do the arrangement yourself. So, you can start with the first one. Attachment will be the first um, stage. Um, that will be followed by entry or penetration. And after penetration, the synthesis begins. And after that, uh, the assembly or maturation. And after that, will be the release. So the virus will be released to begin to infect. Uh, all the nearby cells. So if we look at this uh, direction, so E would be the correct answer. 
Now, for the class forum, I already created a, a virus uh, forum that you want to go ahead and answer this question. The dash of a virion determines the type of cells it enters. And then we have option nucleic acid, matrix protein, glycoprotein, lipid molecules, and shape. So which of these options uh, determines the type of cell that a particular virus will enter? Uh, make sure that you explain your reason for that. So go ahead on the forum and answer that question and explain your reason. And then um, you can come back and look at the video too as we go through animal viruses. And I will talk a little bit about the uh, coronavirus.